Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Today we're going to talk about sustainability and a two million pound wash plant at Tilbury Docks. Let's make some recycled material. We have to keep turning and turning and turning. Wasting nothing. This is not the end. So I'm down at Tilbury Docks. I'm gonna talk a little bit about sustainability. In this specific instance, we're talking about environmental sustainability, which is the responsibility to conserve and efficiently use our planet's natural resources to protect global ecosystems to support health and well-being now and in years to come. So how can we help in the construction industry? With the introduction of electric vans, and I'm led to believe lorries will be with us soon, while rather expensive, we can begin to reduce our carbon footprint. Also, we can start to use more recycled aggregates, of course, if specification permits it on construction projects. We have trains coming into yard with material. Well, that is primary material, which has come from a quarry. Now, recycled material is waste from construction and other processes which has been reprocessed. And that's why we're here today. Let me explain how it works. There's a quarry where they are mining for China clay and they have a material which is a waste product of that, which previously they were just getting rid of. But now that material is being used to create recycled materials like type one and 6F5. But that material has been put onto a barge and that material has been brought to this site in Tilbury on the barge. The barges are offloaded very quickly using this huge bit of kit right here. That material is put onto one of these large conveyor systems you can see in the background behind me. If that wasn't enough, using a waste product from China Clay, now a wash plant has been put in here to run the Type 1 and the 6F5 and the other material, no waste whatsoever to create all products. Let me show you around. This is what creates the recycled aggregates. You put it through this system and it washes it, it compacts it, it removes the clay, it removes silt, and then it sorts new material into different sizes. Let's talk about the water in this system. So we have 15 acres of land over the other side. Now the rainwater is harvested over there. Originally that rainwater it was going out to the dock, but what kept happening is the yards over here kept flooding because it wasn't working properly. So on this site, they've tapped into it and they've built this shaft, which is 11 meters down and four meters wide. So the rainwater now comes here, it's pumped from here to the storage tanks over the other side and the storage tanks, they have pumps which continue to circulate the water around the system and 95% of it is reused. So here you can see the material being blasted with water, treated at this point, and then it goes on another conveyor belt up through another system. So if we have a look at the material here, you can see how clean it is and all the different size stone. So this goes to the top here, and further up here is where it's all separated into different bays. You can see how it vibrates here. I can actually feel it. There's a little close up and the material basically goes through a sieve and when it goes through that sieve is divided onto different conveyor belts like a whole networking system and then it goes into separate bays. That is where the water is core, so no water at all is wasted. And can you imagine this is powered by wind turbines so they are not taking from the national grid. Here we are looking at the material bays. Here is the four to 10 mil bay. If you have a close look, you'll see there are no fines at all. This stone is completely clean. This is really good stone. I'm not sure how this will work with concrete. We'd have to send it to a lab. From experience, I would say that using this sort of stone, we'd have to use slightly more water, which would mean slightly more cement, which isn't great. But of course, a lab would have to confirm that. But in itself, this four to 10 is a great material. Let's have a look at the next bay. Slightly bigger, here we are. We have a 10 to 20. Again, exactly the same as the last one. Again, a great material. I think this could actually be sold like decoratively. Like people could do their driveways and stuff with this. Look at the different colors in the stone. Next bay. 
and here we are. Here's some 20 to 40 mil, which could be used for drainage. No fines at all, all clean granite stone. And last but not least, some oversized. 40 mil to 75 mil. Here it is, right at the end of the belt. There's not much here because everything else has gone into the smaller bays. But again, completely clean stone. You saw the rocks going up the conveyor belt. But anything which is wet comes out of this pipe you can see here and moves to a separate system behind this wash plant. Now this is a system which washes it again and anything below 5 mil goes up this conveyor belt and over the wall and then we have the bay for the sand, 0 to 4 mil. We have to remember now that there's water coming out of this. So the water's gone through this machine, it's cleaned up all the rocks but now we have water with silt in it. So that water is pumped this way. This pipe here is feeding the water that has come from this plant over here. Let's see where it goes. That's the pipe I showed you down here, which is coming from the plant here into these huge reservoirs. And we go into reservoir bay number one. And I've got to tell you, even the stairs here, even the landings are all stainless steel, it's fantastic. Now from here, we're down the stairs, we move into reservoir bay two. So you can see it coming from this bay, a lot like our wheel wash, but this is just working on a much grander scale. And again, you can see it washing here and segregating material. Like a big cake mixer, this is the silt. We have to keep turning and turning and turning. Now this needs to keep moving. It can't stay static. And this is going around like this for 20 hours a day. The other four hours of the day are for maintenance and to make sure everything's working well. And we have two of these. We're doing the same here. And then we move over to this room. Let's go and have a look over there. So give me an idea where we are in relation to the rest of the plant. Now it's going to be very noisy in here, so you need to bear with me. This is where the silt is removed. This acts like a giant washing machine which compresses all of the silt from the water and you can see the water running back here. And this water is reused. And once it has been treated, we see this conveyor belt here leading to outside. This is the silt coming off the conveyor belt and you can see the product that is left. And now the water is recirculated through the entire system all the way back for again and that continuously happens for 20 hours a day. But you might think this is the end. This is not the end. That material is then moved over here. This is the silt that is left. Now, if you leave that silt here for about 14 days, it begins to harden. This can then be shipped somewhere else and this material can be used. So where we once had a waste product, that created a recycled material, which has now been separated to create all new products which can be used across the board in construction. What's important to remember is while we all strive for a sustainable future, we need engineers to specify this recycled material more. Because if a project starts and an engineer gives you a set of plans and you have to use primary material, what can you do? So normally you can try to value engineer it and you can say to the engineer, here is the specification of the recycled material, can I use this? So, Let's hope that more engineers will uh, specify this sort of material and we can begin to all reduce our carbon footprint in the construction industry. What an experience to come down here and look at this wash plant. I want to thank Walsh, their information is in the description below. And I want to thank Ross personally and commend him and Walsh on the setup here. You know, it takes guts and it takes a lot of money to do something like this because ultimately it is a gamble when you're trying to create a sustainable future it isn't cheap but it's the only way that we're going to try to um, maintain the limited natural resources our planet has and work towards a sustainable future together uh, let us know in the comments what you think about this wash plant and any other waste products you think that we could put through the wash plant to create usable recycled products that may work in construction or any other industries.
Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a video on us putting a skip on the London road to see how people reacted. And click here to see us converting a shipping container to create my new office. What a setup down here. Two million squids. Sustainable future. Renewable energy.